Welcome to yet another fireside chat where I talk to you and you watch my hands wave around here over delightful equipment. Well, maybe it's delightful, maybe it's not, I don't know. We'll see, okay? So this is a product that when I went to Neef last year, I I went to the Sky and Telescope guys because, you know, I have one of their telescopes and I asked them, I was like, what kind of light pollution filter I get? And the guy said, absolutely get a filter from STC. Uh, I think they're related or maybe part of the same company, the William Optics, because I know they share the booth space. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, so I ordered one, actually. I looked at a couple of the different types of filters that they had, and I told them, I was like, you know, I, I'm not in a terribly light polluted area. Um, I My observatory that I go to, it's, it's at a Bortle Class 5 sky, so it's not hugely bad. And he, he actually recommended the multi-spectra filter to me. They also have a much stronger filter called the Duo Narrowband Filter, and then they have a really, really weak light pollution filter called the Astral Landscape Filter, I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Nightscape Filter, that's what it was. But anyway, so I, I ordered one. It was, I think it was close to $200, even with the, the discount, but um, it was worth it. I think it was definitely worth buying this filter. Um, I kind of regret sometimes not getting the dual narrowband filter because that filter um, would really allow me to almost completely wipe light pollution out of my images from my backyard. But you know where where I am at the observatory, this works pretty good. It's it's a Bortle Class Five sky. Uh, objects that are higher in the sky look not, look pretty good with this. Okay. Now I will warn you that it does kind of. Uh, change the color of the image a little bit. Uh, when I first looked at my pictures, they were green. And I mean really green. And it kind of freaked me out a little bit. But uh, don't worry about it. It processes out and uh, it does rebalance itself. Um, I would actually kind of recommend getting a filter that doesn't necessarily try to balance itself out. There actually are filters out there that advertise themselves as being color balanced out of the box. And the problem with those types of filters is that they will create more noise because they're blocking certain pieces of light that don't actually improve the light pollution blocking characteristics of the filter. Uh, this one here is really just designed to block light pollution as efficiently as possible and yet let through as much light as possible. So let's talk about how much light this thing blocks. So it blocks about a stop. You know, so it reduces the amount of light coming into the sensor by about one stop, which is not actually very much. Um, now, I'll tell you something though, that light pollution is a type of noise, okay? And if you reduce, even though this reduces the amount of light by about one stop, that's not a killer, okay? Really, you gain maybe two or three stops of performance because it reduces the amount of light pollution that there is in your image. Because once again, light pollution is a form of noise. And that's how you need to think about it. That's how you process it out. And so getting rid of the light pollution will decrease the noise in your images. So let's let's kind of show you the packaging. This packaging, it's a little bit different than the very first packaging that I got from them. Uh, their, their packaging has changed a little bit. Their website's also changed a lot. It's been getting gradually better and better. When I first got on their website, it was very difficult to order something. But now it's uh, the links are starting to work and stuff like that, so they're obviously working on that. Um, but now I have, I have purchased two of these because the first one that I purchased it broke. I was too aggressive putting getting it in the camera body, so this is what they now come looking like. Okay, it'll have the brand of camera that's designed for. This is originally what the cases looked like, and actually in here there's my broken one. So you pop this open, it'll be inside here, like so. I think this is kind of the one that will come in regardless if you have, you know, four-thirds or whatever APC size sensors. And then of course it'll come with, you know, different literature, cleaning rag, there's a UV sensing card here, and then directions on how to install it into your camera. So installing. Don't be aggressive with these things, okay? You're basically going to kind of lay it in here so that the bottom edge is just kind of sitting in the bottom and then the top's kind of tilted out a little ways. And then you just very lightly press 
against that little tab and it should just snap into place ever so gently. You should be able to do this with a Q-tip. If you're pushing more pressure on there than you than you would need to with a Q-tip, you're gonna break it, okay? Which is what I did. <laughs> but luckily, those guys are really good. They gave me a pretty significant discount on replacing this, which I was pretty happy with. Um, so, in the end, I really like this thing. I'm gonna show you some screenshots of the how this thing blocks light and some of their other filters out there that also block light pollution. These are really good filters. They really do let in as much of the good light as you can. I think their transparency of, uh, of light that you want is like in the 95% range, which is really good. Most filters in the 90 or high up or 85s. So here, just I'll give you like a kind of, this is what this filter looks like all the way around. Hey, this is the broken one. Um, they've changed them just a tad bit. I, I think I bought one of the very first ones they made because the pads here, which hold it away from the shutter, I think they might have been just a little bit too thin. And as a result, I noticed that uh, when I was trying to take pictures with this, sometimes the shutter would open and it would stay open. It wouldn't, or no, I'm sorry, it would close and it wouldn't open back up and that's because the camera was sensing something that was too close to the sensor um, but the newer ones they have a little bit thicker pads here and so it holds it out it's a little bit farther from the sensor and I haven't had any issues with the new one so some other kind of little things to look at on this thing this right here is kind of how you would want to lay it in like I said this is this, this is the camera you would tilt it in from the bottom and then press it in from the top. And I won't do that again because I've got it in here. I don't have any dust behind the filter. I don't want to get any dust behind the filter. Um, Olympus cameras, they really do spoil you because they have that supersonic wave filter that blasts any dust off the, uh, the sensor. That's something that nobody else has still, which I, I don't know why that nobody else has it. And uh, once you put a filter in here, of course, then you kind of have to worry about dust on the surface of this filter and so flats do kind of become a little bit more critical. So here's the multi-spectra filter that I have. This this is its actual transmission spectrum and as you can see it covers all the major bands that you want the HB, the O3, the hydrogen alpha, the S2 but the HG, both the HGs and the NA those are light pollution spectra zones and those are areas that you want to stay away from. So how much light pollution does this thing cut back? Uh, I would say it actually cuts back on maybe about it takes a Bortle 5 sky and it makes it feel like more like a Bortle class 4 maybe Bortle class 3 sky. Now this multi-band this is actually something that's off their website it's, it's something I found digging a little bit deeper and this actually gives you a little more accurate and more precise of a view of the different transmission zones that this particular filter has. And this right here, this is actually not yet listed in their store. Uh, it might be something that's in development. I don't know. I don't have any insights here. Maybe we'll see it at NEEF this year in 2020. Uh, but this could be a new multi-band or multi-spectra 2 that's maybe a little bit stronger um, because it you know definitely has larger gaps between the different transmission zones, but it would give you your green, your blue, and your red light. It would probably cut back. I, based on like what I'm seeing here, this thing would probably reduce uh, light pollution by a much more significant amount. So, like, let's say if you live in a Bortle Class Six zone, you're gonna feel like you're you're photographing in maybe like a Bortle Class Three. And then this right here is the Spectra for another filter that they sell. This is the dual band pass filter. Uh, I'm gonna buy this next. And this one here, based on uh, the research that I've done, this is going to probably reduce light pollution by almost a factor of 20, uh, which is very significant. Basically turns a, uh, a digital SLR into almost a narrow band shooting camera, except you're going to be able to capture just a sliver of the blue, a sliver of the green, and then uh, obviously your little sliver of red. Now, one of the advantages of Olympus's cameras is that the lenses are designed to direct the light straight back at the sensor. So on their website, they have a warning not to use lenses that are shorter than 60 millimeters. That applies for 35 millimeter cameras. Okay, obviously if you're APC, you divide it by 1.5. 
and if you're a four-third user, you can completely ignore this altogether. Uh, thanks to Olympus's lens design where they direct the light straight back. This right here, for example, is a picture off their own website. It's an 8mm lens. It's the widest lens that Olympus makes. And as you can see, there's no color fringing going on here. So if you live in a light polluted area and you want to get some, you know, pictures of the Milky Way uh, with a really wide angle lens, you know, this Olympus is actually kind of your only option in this area.